Alright folks, my name is Frayne and welcome to another post-commentary today. I should probably find a way to tag them differently so you know it's post-commentary, but we'll, uh, we'll work on that later. Today I'm driving Germany 6.3. I couldn't decide really what to make a video on, I didn't have anything prepared in advance. So I looked around the tech trees for a bit, trying to find something that I hadn't covered much recently, and I settled back on Germany. It's one that a lot of people seem to struggle with, so I thought I'd go for the Jag Panther. It's not really going to be the best vehicle for this situation, which kind of goes against how I normally play. I think in the, this BR, really, the Tiger 2P is almost always the better option, unless you're on a very long range map where you get a bit more out of the speed and you're less likely to be shot on the side. But I'm specifically playing the Jag Panther here to try and get some use out of it. And it kind of evolved into a, a more interesting game on its own outside of the Jag Panther, which is why I'm doing this one. It's not about the tank, it's about the game overall. So we're on Conquest here on Eastern Europe. I am against Britain, America and France. There's no Russia. And I wasn't really quite sure where to go initially. I thought about heading up the hill into that little town, but it, it seems a little too easy to get flanked or shot on the side up there. So instead, I'm coming over the water. My intent is to try and get some shots onto the uh, cap from the south side. But I'm also the only one over here. There was a panther sort of heading this way initially, but he seems to have stopped and changed direction. So I'm now here on my own, and I'm a bit concerned about potentially getting flanked. It's been a long time since I've played this area. When I first started playing, I always came this way, usually driving an Achilles, as it was my main tank at the time, but I'm out here now. And there's not really much I can do if I do get flanked from the south. I'm just going to have to accept that it's going to happen. Um, I'll take myself out of the game too much if I try and flank around there myself. So... We're going to move up, and we're going to take a position that they can see towards the cap. Maybe get a shot up the hill if I'm lucky. Let's see what turns up. Now there's machine gun blurring away there. I don't really want to be stopping in the middle of the open like this, but I don't want to give him time to, uh, to kill anyone or notice me, so I'm just going to turn, take the shot, and that gets rid of the super pershing. Now, properly into cover, let's tuck in. Then the ar angle here is a lot narrower than I thought it was going to be. There's one moving in the background, which was my intended target, but that T29 managed to drive in front. And now I can hear an engine. Now, I wasn't moving, so hopefully he might not have heard me, but... Trying to turn around here is knocking down an awful lot of stuff, so it's likely that he has heard me, and I've got to get around. My back's exposed, especially to anything up on the hill. So it's not looking really very safe for me right now. There he is, it's an ARL 44. Here, had I been in the Tiger 2P, I would have just seen him, driven around the corner, and shot him in the side of the turret because obviously having a turret enables you to get your gun on target way faster. Again, a lot of lineups suffer from this issue. One tank is always the superior one, and all the others are just sort of a mediocre backup. I've tried backing off here a bit. It means I'm more exposed from the rear, as I don't have the rubble anymore. But slightly less chance of him seeing me. He doesn't seem to have. He's turned his turret away. I'm going to take the chance now. There we are. Turret crew and breach are out. He had no ammo in there, but he's trying to turn his side on me. I don't know why. I can overmatch that quite easily and straight through, finishing him off. Apparently the shot overpenned. As you can see, the walls behind him fell down as well. I didn't expect that. It is a 50mm side plate, so there's no way the fuse shouldn't have been triggered. Now, I'm just going to pause it here. You can see... If I'd had a turret here, it would have been far easier to get the gun on target. Instead, I managed to bump the front of my tank on the rubble. Not the best driving from me, but it obviously means that I have a much harder time getting the gun around. It's a very limited traverse, and the extra second or two would have made all the difference here. You can see the side of a Centurion over there at the cap. It would have been perfect shot, straight in, no fuss. 
dead centurion and cap saved but instead he sees me my gun's still slightly out of traverse arc so i have to give that extra little jerk and we take each other out i went for the roof it's a, an easy shot with the long 88 it'll take out all three crew members and it was the only one i really had available now he turned around i would rather not have died but it did at least prevent the cap so we've only got two aircraft and a whirlwind alive not really anything to back me up but there's a few players potentially able to respawn and i've chosen to go with the panther could have brought the 2p several situations with the initial spawn it would have made the difference but i need the speed here tickets are still high for both teams so i'm not in danger of losing by cap anytime soon but we've got very limited players on the ground which means that the enemy team is likely very dug in they're going to have good cover over the cap and possibly even over the exits to our spawn. So I've chosen the Panther because it's got the speed. And I'm going to head for this town up the hill. There's a gun barrel there that I've just noticed. So I trained my gun on that. You can see an M19 also rushing to the cap. So a bit of artillery. Try and maybe scare him off from going onto it for a moment. Keeping my gun there in case I see him start to move. But using binoculars. Just double check there's nothing else up there. Now if I'd been in the Tiger 2 here, I wouldn't have been able to get over here as quickly. It still might have got the job done. Um, he didn't seem to notice me, but obviously I have the benefit of hindsight at this stage. Now obviously the Tiger 2's got more frontal armor and better pen capabilities, so better chance of taking players out. But he is moving here and I was concerned he'd seen me yeah, he decided to peek from the other side of the building and just see his transmission. So I went for the safe one. Thinking he's seen me, I just want to burn him out. I see him turning his gun around. I did consider going for the barrel at this stage. See, it just aims slightly higher, but by the time I'm reloaded, it's around the corner. I'm still trying to get fires. For whatever reason, I cannot get this guy to light up. I'm trying high shots, I'm trying low shots, I'm trying to see if I can maybe catch another module over the top of the engine. Yeah, I managed to finally start a fire, which will interrupt his repair at the least. But I have to be very aware that I don't really have anything for support, and he does. So, still trying to cause a second fire. This is where it starts to get a bit messy. There's M19 down on the cap. I was hoping for a hole break, but no such luck. I don't really find the panther's gun causes them a lot. T29 seems to be engaging uh, a Werbel wind now, so... Didn't really get anything with that shot. But his turret drive is enough. He's got no turret drive, he's got no engine. It means he can't come for me. So, I'm just going to leave him for a moment. He should still be on repair. And I'll pick off what I can from this M42. And then alternate back and forth between targets, trying to keep each one crippled. AMX M4 there as well. Yeah, he's down. But this right here could have cost me everything. It took me by surprise a lot. I went for the M4 because I thought the T29 was still likely to be repairing. I have interrupted his repair once with an engine fire and then took out his turret ring afterwards. I really thought he'd still be repairing. I was instead very wrong. Um, obviously underestimating the amount of time for those multiple shots I took. There's still two tanks around. They're both anti-aircraft guns, but they're still a threat. And the T-29 is coming for me. Um, here he comes. Now, I'm very fortunate there that he bounced. I managed to take him out through the side. Let's focus on the duster. He's the closer target and the one more likely to get the flanking shot. And now I can focus on this M19. So that's him down as well. Area seems clear. We've got a couple more players back on the ground now. So I'm just going to go down and try and get this decap. Or at least that's the intention. I've got to get there quickly before any of them respawn and get a side shot on me as I'm moving in. I don't really have time. But, there's a heavy on my flank. 
Now he's going to both keep people pinned in spawn and potentially shoot me in the back. So taking care not to hit the lower part of the turret where it's curved and has a chance of bouncing. I might have been able to get through the side there, but I went for the safe one, got his breach. Now for the side. I could potentially leave him, but I'm not sure really how long his repair time is. And having just had the T29 out repair me there, chosen finish him off and now I'll go for the cap. My shooting on the T29 wasn't the best selection. Um, I really didn't expect it to be so tough to set on fire. But the side of the turret is very tough for this gun. Now, ideally what I wanted to do after getting the horizontal turret drive was to go around his side and shoot him under the turret. But the duster was kind of putting a problem there, so I had to stop and shoot from where I was. But it worked out alright in the end. And now I need to focus on the cap. So stop first, just double check around, make sure there's nothing there. There is, there's an AMX M4 on the hill. So shut him to his side. He's got a huge breach. Even if I hadn't killed it, it would have been incapable of firing back. Now they have a lot of aircraft up at the moment. And even if I didn't already have a, an aversion to aircraft, I don't want to make myself a sitting duck. So I'm going to get the decap and I'm going to run to the safest place I can find which is in this little u-bend here it means the enemy has to drive in front of my gun if they want to get to the cap although we are now very low on tickets the cap wasn't under their control for too long essentially the time I was fighting that T29 but we are low so I'm just gonna wait get the artillery on the main road two of the planes have just been taken out so now is probably the best chance I'm gonna get Pop off some smoke, a couple to each side to try and uh, cover the main sight lines, and then push onto the cap. We need to get the ticket blade started, and smoke won't last forever, so I've got to go now. And I'm not going to turn around, just turn the turret. Turning around will expose my side for a long time, and I just want to be ready to run away. See a quick glimpse? There we are, CA Lorraine. Nice easy kill on the side like that and get ready to flee, the smoke should cover me. I want to get off this cap as soon as I can. I need to stay relatively nearby, at least make sure they can't get back here. But being on the cap is just going to make me a target. I'm not going to go back into the same spot. Although nobody saw me go there, it's still one of the more obvious ones because it's closer to the cap. So instead I'm going to move up and go into the next little... Uh, alcove you bend that I can hide in, tuck in and watch the approaches to the cap. It is of course more likely that they might make it past as they can go up and around the hill but I should be alright we've got a couple of players up on the hill now. So let's tuck in I can hear an anti-aircraft gun behind me, check the scoreboard, and I know that at least one player was still in a plane that hasn't been shot down, so there's only two left. That means that this anti-aircraft is the only thing on the ground. No real danger now, I can afford to push it. So, no point sitting in my hidey hole, let's go. Now, I've said a lot this game that the Tiger 2P would have been a better choice, and I think it's still probably would have, um, even with hindsight. The one thing that it might not have potentially done is gotten me over the hill to that T29, but beyond that I think it, it would have been better for everything. It would have taken out the ARL easier, it would have been less likely to die to the Centurion because I'd have much smaller weak points from shoot at. He would have only been able to go from the turret essentially and that wouldn't have killed me, it would have only disabled me. Seeing as I killed him already then it wouldn't have mattered. Now that might have changed the outcome of the game already. Now instead for the second spawn I could have brought it, I still had enough spawn points and it's gonna be cheaper to bring it as a second spawn instead of a third spawn but I wanted the speed and these are choices you always have to make. Of course the Tiger II is a tank that I'm more comfortable with. I enjoy it, I know a lot of people don't. A lot of people might actually prefer the Panther 
and as I said in previous videos, staying with what you're comfortable with will almost always actually get better results. For me, the Tiger 2 is the better choice for this whole thing. It, it could have made the game very different in a, a positive way. Now, I spawned a casemate first, and if you're going to spawn a casemate, I think it's better to bring it first if you really have to bring one, because you have more knowledge of where the enemy's going to be coming from. If you spawn it later on, there's more of a chance they're on your flank. Now, of course, you're here for fun. If you want to play a specific tank, play that tank. But if you're trying to go for the win, then certain vehicles are always going to be more useful to you. And knowing what to spawn and when to spawn it is a very important thing to know or to learn. Still, this game is over now, so let's go look at the, uh, the scoreboards and everything at the end. Managed to pick up a winter camo for the Yang Panther, which is always nice to have. Decent amount of lines for the game. Not much vehicle research, but I am researching a tier 6. 26 hits for 12 kills, so... I didn't really make the best use of my shots, although the vast majority of them were into the back of that T29 trying to start to fire. But onto the scoreboard. We've got 12 kills, the rest of the team getting 6 between them, so very big on the carry. Certainly not something I expected at all for this battle. I really didn't think that was going to be a win. I was half tempted to not respawn at all when it came to it. But I thought, we've got a few guys there who can respawn. Maybe they will... Maybe they're just waiting to get an assist or something so they can get the points out. And in the end, it, it paid off. Lesson to myself as well that I shouldn't really abandon the game so early just because I died and we don't have anyone on the ground. It can be frustrating being the only person on the ground, but sometimes you get a result like this, which you just really never expected. And those ones make it more worth it. But there we go. Good game in the end. Very happy with it. Very unexpected. Uh, that's all for now. So if you have any requests, feedback, anything at all, suggestions, please drop a comment. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time.